Okay, so in this video, we're gonna be implementing a class file using the .h and .cpp extensions for C++. We're gonna basically make a student class within a namespace and give it some basic member functions and we'll go from there. To begin, we're gonna go ahead and right click the header files and we're gonna do add new item and we're gonna call this student.h, all lowercase. Once we create the class, we're greeted with hashtag pragma once, which is basically what we want, but we're gonna use a more portable version just in case you're not programming in the Visual Studio environment. You may be programming in another C++ compiler, which is fine, uh, not, not a compiler, in an environment, uh, but using a different compiler. And so we're gonna change this to a more portable version. We're gonna call it hashtag if not defined. And we're gonna call this h underscore student, all uppercase, just like that. In the body, we're gonna do hashtag define h underscore student. The same what we wrote up here. What this is, so if not defined is a preprocessor programming technique which guards your program from including the same header file twice. You should always use this technique. The reason for that is because if you include the same header file twice, um, I won't go into the specifics of why this is bad, but trust me, there would be issues if you include the same header file twice. So this is very important. Okay, so to begin, guys, we're going to create a namespace. By the way, we're going to talk about what namespaces actually have the use for. I discussed in my previous videos. Um, I was being a little vague on purpose because in this video, we're basically showing you where namespaces are. Namespaces include class declarations, Lots of functions that you want to use for all sorts of classes in that namespace. And basically that's it. Functions, you know, structures, classes, all of the above, right? Anything that you can declare basically and you want access to within all the elements inside, such as a class, you can use namespaces for that. And it's really important. So we're also going to declare an enum and we're going to just call this quality. There's no reason for this. We're not really going to use it, but I'm just going to show you how you can use other types uh, in the namespace so that we have good, bad, and decent for your student quality. And this is a good point. Quality, let's say quality, good, bad, decent, applying to, let's say, a student. It's not unique to a student. This could be unique to anything in this school namespace that I'm going to define. For example, if I had a class declaration for faculty, well, I want a quality for them as well. And so I don't want to put this enumeration inside the class definition because it's unique to all instances or all classes that I would be using this namespace for. Outside the namespace, we're going to create our class. We're going to use the class keyword again. If I do this, class student, and I open and close, this will work, this will compile, all is good. The issue is I am actually not creating a definition for this student. Why? Well, we've been talking about this forever, guys. And it's really important that I keep reiterating this point. To learn what namespaces are early on can really help you in programming in C++. So class, school, uh, scope resolution, and now you're going to see the color change. Now it decided to make it green. So now this is referring to this student class declaration. So this is the definition. In our private, so these are our private member variables or functions. We're likely to put member variables here. So we're gonna create strings. String first name, last name, ID. So this is gonna create three strings and we gotta include string in here. We're gonna do our include statements above the namespace but below the in if not defined. Okay, so we included string. We have three member variables. I could put them on each line, but I'm separating it just to show you another syntactic sugar of C++. In public, we're gonna create a constructor. So we're just gonna do the name of the class, empty parentheses for a default constructor. And then we're gonna create another one that takes three parameters and essentially it's gonna take three strings, just like that. And I will name them for your convenience, first name. So I purposefully name them exactly as the private member variables because I'm gonna show you 
how if you have the same uh, variable here and the same variable here, the name, how do you reference each one? And it's really important actually. We're gonna talk about that soon. So we're gonna have getter methods for accessing these private member variables because the whole point of object-oriented programming is private, public, protected, these things. It's for encapsulation. I don't want outside classes to directly interfere with this uh, parameter, like change it, setters and getters, right? Um, I want a function to limit how you can set this parameter and how you can access it. So we're gonna create inline functions. I'm going to go into detail now about these, um, but its return type is gonna be a string, std string, and we're gonna call it get first name. And since we don't have any particular behavior special for getting this, we just want to return the raw string. We're going to return first name like that. Now, why is it inline? Well, it's a very simple function. It's basically one line. You can think of inline if you're writing something simple or like basically something that's one line that you can write. You would use an inline for that. And what inline does is whenever I reference or whenever I call this method, get first name, what gets replaced is this. So it's something, it's actually a thing in C++ that speeds things up. So we have all of our getters and now we're gonna create our setters. We're gonna do void set first name. We don't need to return the first name. We just wanna set it. And there's nothing, it's, it's not gonna be anything special. Um, and we're not defining the behavior like an inline does, we're not defining the behavior in that line. We're literally gonna just do this. Okay, so this is our student class declaration for our functions. It's all the prototypes for the functions. So now this is where the .cpp and .h differ. .hs con contain definitions for things, declarations for things. Defining the behavior of those things goes in the cpp file. It's the code file. Another way to think of this, this is the outline of all the features you want in a class or file, for example, and the .cpp defines those behaviors or of those functions or variables or whatever you have in there. The number one thing we need to do now, so how do we get stuff from student.h? We have to include it. Now what we're gonna do, this is really important. We're gonna look at our first function we defined a constructor, a default constructor. Now, if I hover over it, you see how it says school, scope resolution, student, name of class, scope resolution, student, with parentheses means it's a, it's a function, uh, not a class because that's parentheses. Basically, that's how we have to define the function. We can't even do student, uh, student like this. This will not work. It has no idea where student is. We defined uh, the class outside the namespace, but the declaration of it is in the namespace. So you have to use two scope resolution operators now. So school, um, scope resolution, class, scope resolution function, which is our constructor. Now what we wanna do is just set the data members uh, to default values. So I'm gonna teach you now that this keyword this arrow is basically saying this instance, refer to this instance, all of this stuff is in the this pointer. So we're basically saying this particular first name, I want you to be Anthony. This particular last name, I want you to be Reapism. This particular ID, I want you to be 001. We'll do a, a number 001, okay? That's what we're doing there. We don't need a semicolon there. Uh, we need it here. First name. So this is a really important. These are different colors, okay? I'm gonna teach you what that means. If I did, for example, last name equals last name. This looks like it's not wrong, right? We're saying, okay, this the last name I'm talking about is this one. So basically, this has to do with scopes. 
and the scope of this function, the nearest last name variable declaration is in the parameter. So we're basically saying this parameter set it equal to itself. It does nothing. It's horrible. And the reason you know it's doing nothing is because they're the same color. So how you know to refer to the other last name, you have to do the this pointer. You must do it this way. It's the only way to fix that. Our inlines are done, and we just need to do these. So we're going to go ahead and copy these functions. So remember, the name is where you have to do the scope resolution. Uh, so we just copy paste like this. OK, so this is our setter functions. And we're basically done, guys. We will improve this uh, class later.